This is going to be an example on double shear in solids. We have a, a yoke and rod connection and it's subjected to a tensile force of 5 kilonewtons. And we need to determine the average normal and uh, the normal stress in each rod and the average shear stress in the pin at A. Uh, so, first off, we know that sigma gives us our normal or normal shear or normal stress excuse me normal shear doesn't even make sense and it is given to us as the axial load which is the normal over the area and tau is going to be our shear stress and that's going to get, be given to us as the shear V over the area so so we're given two rods, or yeah, two rods, and it's uh, connected at A, and and so we need to figure out what our what our normal stress is in each rod. So let's let's start off with the left side, the 40 mil 40 millimeter. And so we're given sigma is equal to the shear or the normal, which is I'm going to just convert it to newtons, so I'm going to say 5,000 newtons. And the reason for that is, if I just make a cut right there, so I'll make a cut, I have 5 kilonewtons going that way, and I also have to have a reaction of 5,000 going the opposite way. And we know from our sign convention that that is positive normal force and this is going to be positive shear <coughs> but all we're worried about is um, the normal at this point we don't we're not really necessarily worried about the shear because there is no shear so going back to our equation we have 5,000 newtons over the area of the uh, the cross-sectional area which is going to be pi over 4 times d squared which our diameter is 40 millimeters but I want to convert that to meters because I like working in newtons per meter squared or if you just want to work straight from newtons to millimeters squared that gives everything in terms of megapascals but let's just, let's just keep it at newtons per meter squared which is going to be 0 0.0 4 meters. So once we multiply all this stuff out, let's see we have 0.04 squared times pi over 4 and 5,000 over all that. So we get a fairly large number. This is going to be 3, 9, 7, 8, 8, seven three and some change and point and point whatever you have back here and this is all newtons per meter squared I guess I can just go write it out since it's only three more numbers five seven seven newtons per meter squared or this is Pascal. So this is a large number, so I want to break it down. So I'm going to move three spots over. Three nine seven eight eight seven three. Okay. So I'm going to move three spots over, and then three more spots. So that gives me three point nine. Uh, I guess seven nine times 10 to the oh, times 10 to the 6 pascals or I could write this as 3.979 megapascals and that is the shear um, 
I'm just gonna put L for the left side. Or I mean the normal stress, not shear. So that is our normal normal <clears throat> stress inside that part. So now we can move over and find out what is on the right side. So sh normal stress on the right is equal to the normal force over area again. So we have sigma r is equal to 5,000 newtons. Again, erasing this, if I make a cut right there, this side is subjected to 5,000 newtons and this side has to have an equal and opposite which on the right side of the beam that's your, that's your I mean excuse me on the left side of the cut that's your positive sign convention so sigma r is equal to 5000 over pi over 4 and our diameter is 30 millimeters which I'm going to write as 0.03 meters 0.03 meters squared. So this is all equal to 0.03 squared times pi over 4 and 5,000 divided by that gives us 707355 3.026 pascals newton per meter squared or pascals so once again I'm going to move everything over so that's 7.07 .07 times 10 to the 6 pascals or 7.07 .07 mega pascals and that is our normal stress on the right So now we found out what our normal stress is inside the, the bars, inside the rods. Now we need to find out what our average shear stress is at A. And shear stress is given to us as V over A. So <coughs> just looking at this, we see 5 kilonewtons. So you're probably tempted to put 5,000 inside inside V or replace it with V. That is incorrect because uh, let's see coming over here we have our rod coming down and then we have the other rod that is connected to it and we have a pin that connects the two. That's my pen. And so you're probably thinking that you're gonna you're just gonna put a five kilonewton force down and that's what your shear is because well your shear right there and right there. Well that is actually incorrect. The way we want to look at this is through reactions. So I can consider this 5 kilonewton force, I'm going to consider that a point load. And I'm going to call this side A and this side B. Well, let me use different colors here. I'm going to call this A and I'm going to call this B. And I can actually draw it as a simply supported beam, just a pin and a rotor, and a 5,000 force going down or just five kilonewtons now you don't have to know the lengths because you know that it, it it acts right in the middle and so if we have if it's uniform if it's right down the middle you know that each reaction is exactly half so this is going to be 2.5 kilonewtons and this is going to be 2.5 kilonewtons 
and so if you draw your your shear diagram we start off at 2.5 in the middle it goes down 5 to negative 2.5 and at the end it jumps up so even though we have a 5 kilonewton force that acts in the middle the maximum shear that this pin ever sees is 2.5 kilonewtons so in our shear equation tau is equal to 2500 newtons over the area which is pi over 4 times the diameter which is 25 millimeters so it's 0 0.025 meters squared so tau is going to be equal to 0 0.025 squared times pi over 4 and we have 2500 divided by that so that's going to be given 5 O nine two nine five eight point one seven nine newtons per meter squared. So one two three one two three so tau is equal to five point oh nine times ten to the sixth pascals or again 5.09 megapascals. So that is our shear stress inside the pin that connects the two rods together. And we found out what our normal stress is inside each rod with various diameters. So now that we know how to calculate our shear stress given a, a double shear our next example we're going to work a, a reaction or a little frame problem that deals with double shear and, and see if we can connect some dots see you in the next video